What is up, everyone? This is Ant from the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast, and today you are checking out our newest episode in Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions. This episode is with The Undertaker, and it's titled One More Round, as Stone Cold had already met with The Undertaker previously on the Broken Skull Sessions in the first episode, but he was back to meet with The Undertaker again. And in the first, the conversation, the Undertaker talks about breaking kayfabe. And so it was very hard for him to do at first, but he does feel like it's been a little liberating sharing, you know, what's been going on in the business and his life. He's been in the business for 30 years. So for him to be able to share his story, it's a little heartbreaking character, but he's been feeling liberating doing so. He talks about his own brand of wine. Uh, and he's humbled that he is still remembered and is still being used for opportunities like creating alcohol and different items like that. Undertaker is consumed by the business. He was a gimmick. You know, he didn't have any downtime. You're constantly on the go. And for people like wrestlers and actors and people on the go all the time, that becomes normal to them. We see the new Undertaker WWE title belt that was made in honor of him. And he thinks it looks really cool. It has the Eagle belt. So it was very cool. And he believes that the world title should go on the guy who is filling the seats. When you think of world champions, the Undertaker thinks of guys like the nature boy, Ric Flair, Harley race, and so on. Undertaker feels that he was better chasing the title rather than actually holding on to the WWE title, which I can understand Undertaker is not really known for being WWE champion. He talks about the streak and he says that no one thought of the streak until WrestleMania 18 when he fought Ric Flair. At that point, Undertaker was 9-0. and And Undertaker and Stone Cold watched parts of the Ric Flair versus Undertaker match at WrestleMania 18. Undertaker said that he was thrilled to be in the match. He hated taking chops. And in this match, he became 10 to 0. And in 2002, at the time of WrestleMania, Vince McMahon didn't have the Undertaker booked. It was either going to be Rob Van Dam versus Ric Flair, and Undertaker chose to fight Ric Flair. And Rick thanked the Undertaker for that match, and Rick told the Undertaker that this match story is confidence. At the time, Undertaker couldn't understand because he thought, you know, this is an age where Ric Flair, a great wrestler. But Undertaker you know, can understand that now being older, being in the shape that he is in, feeling confident again. He felt like when Brock Lesnar broke the streak at WrestleMania 30, it didn't really do much for Brock Lesnar. Undertaker claims that when he got to WrestleMania, he, the day of, he was told he was winning, but by the time he got to the arena, Vince walked in and told Undertaker he was going to lose. Um, And, you know, he feels like he should have, he felt that he should have dropped the streak to Reigns rather than Brock. He feels that Brock already had a moment. He loves Brock, but he doesn't think Brock Lesnar should have been the guy to break the streak. Stone Cold was shocked when he saw the streak end, and he agrees with the Undertaker that Brock didn't need to break the streak. They then look over at Hell in a Cell in 1997. And he talks about um, the main reason for Hell in a Cell was for the debut of Kane. He talks about two, he talks to two young guys about Shawn Michaels all the time. And he feels like when it came to a fight, you believed in Shawn Michaels. You thought Shawn Michaels could hand down an ass whooping. HBK could have a great match with a broomstick, Undertaker believes. He Undertaker talks about how Vince McMahon came up with the idea of Kane being the Undertaker's brother. Undertaker thought it was perfect. And Shawn Michaels, or I'm sorry, the Undertaker and Stone Cold say that when the bell rings, no one outshines like Shawn Michaels. They talk about WrestleMania 14. Shawn Michaels wasn't too happy about dropping the title of Stone Cold. They didn't know if Shawn Michaels was going to drop the belt. So backstage, Undertaker taped his fists up, and he said that if, if Shawn Michaels wasn't going to do business the right way, he was eventually going to drop the title, whether it be an ass-kicking from Undertaker or he was going to do it what was good for business. He didn't like Shawn Michaels at first, um, but Shawn Michaels eventually got saved by God and became one of Undertaker's favorite people on Earth. Undertaker felt like 
they were in the trenches and were in direct competition. It was Stone Cold's time, and it was best for business for Stone Cold to become the new WWE champion. He then talks about the Montreal screw job, and Undertaker went to Vince and told him, you know, you need to figure this shit out. He didn't understand Vince's position at that point, and he felt like Vince McMahon should have came to him and said, hey, listen, I'm having this problem, because Undertaker felt like at that time Vince um, should have just been there for him. They then talk about BSK, the Bone Street crew. You know, at the time, click, the Click Try and Maneuver storylines were the BSK was not political. They were just a group of friends. Undertaker misses Yokozuna. He called the Godfather Bear and talked about they were inseparable. He could go six months without talking to Godfather, and Godfather would still be there for him. Undertaker and Godfather met in Memphis in the ring. He tells a story about the a match with the Godfather. And Godfather went real hard on Undertaker until Undertaker hit him with a chair, and then that stopped it. Um, and then he talked about how he would give the Godfather his Rolex like 20 times when he was drunk, and the Godfather would always give it back to him. They then talk about wrestler's court, and they talk about a situation with Teddy Long. Undertaker was pretty much the judge in wrestler's court. And at some point, Teddy came into possession with Viagra, and Teddy Long was selling the Viagra to the boys. He got the Viagra for free, um, and he was selling them. And John Bradshaw Layfield actually put Teddy Long on trial for that. They talk about how Mae Young was a witness, and she was mad um, that they needed Niagara. And they kept trying to say, May it's Viagra, but Mae Young didn't care. Teddy Long was found guilty. They felt like wrestlers court, wrestlers court was a way to handle situations before it got worse. Um, they talk about Ric Flair challenging Undertaker to a drinking game on an airplane. They talk about the situation at UFC between Brock Lesnar and Kenny Velasquez. Undertaker looks at Lesnar and says, you want to go? That whole moment was planned. Undertaker was supposed to pick a fight with Brock. Brock went out of his way to come by the Undertaker. And if Brock Lesnar was coming back to WWE, the Undertaker wanted to get first dibs at Brock Lesnar. They then take a look at the Hell in a Cell match from King of the Ring 1998, and they believe that that was the most talked about in the famous Hell in a Cell match of all time. They talk about how there was no holes in the fence, so it was hard to climb. Throwing Mick Foley off the cage was the closest out-of-body experience the Undertaker ever had. He didn't want to do that part, tossing Mankind off the stage, but Mick Foley wanted that. After Mick fell through the cell down to the ring, the Undertaker is looking down to see if Mick Foley is moving at all. Then they talk about the Undertaker getting set on fire at Elimination Chamber in 2010. Undertaker was pissed. He had to sit in the pot for 20 minutes and then fight for another 20 minutes. He wanted to kill the pyro guy. You know, a couple of weeks prior, the Undertaker told the pyro guy that, you know, the fire seemed to be a bit too close. The pyro guy said, no, you're fine. Also, the Undertaker was going to wear a sleeveless jacket, but he wanted the title to be seen, so he instead wore the other jacket, thankfully. He poured water on his head. The pyro came out on his left. So the Undertaker turned to the right and saw then the flames burst up on the right side of the Undertaker. He moved forward. He saw his hat and sleeve on fire. He had second degree burns. We then talk about Paul Bear and the Undertaker together. Uh, the, when the Undertaker worked for WCCW, Percy Pringle managed him for a match with Bruiser Brody. He loved teaming with Harley Race in Japan. Rick Rude told Vince McMahon about Percy Pringle. And um, Bruce Pritchard didn't do towns with The Undertaker because he was writing storylines. Bruce Pritchard initially welcomed Undertaker into WWE. But over time, Paul Bearer would soon come to manage The Undertaker. And Paul loved every aspect of the business. And he was great working with The Undertaker. The Undertaker talks about his last ride documentary. He's proud of it. The Undertaker wanted to show us something different. It stretched out for three years, and he wanted people to understand what it takes to do what wrestlers do in this business. He talks about his Boneyard match. His brother died before the match had taken place, and the Undertaker was the person that had to call his mom to tell her about his brother's passing. He had to continue and fight, though. AJ watched the first episode of the Broken Skull Sessions and asked The Undertaker if he would fight him. It took some time for The Undertaker to, you know, to, to say yes, but he did because he loved AJ Styles and he always wanted to fight him. Um, and they 
couldn't train at the performance center because it was shut down. So pretty much they had to go to train for a match on his own. He says that the physical trauma and the fact that he can't keep up has made him happy that he's retired. He has more respect for the business and wrestlers to just do quick moments of him appearing and then just dropping out. Undertaker says that he's good being retired and he's, you know, able to say that and he's happy to say that, which makes his fans feel that the Undertaker has done his job. Well, that is it for our quick, quick recap of our Broken School Sessions, the Undertaker one more round. We learned a lot more about his time with wrestlers like Mankind, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold. We learned about the Hell in a Cell match, wrestlers core, and so much more. Thank you for checking out this edition of Broken School Sessions. In our next edition, coming out in June, we have the Broken School Sessions with Drew McIntyre, and we also will be having this Broken School Sessions with Bailey. So many great people on this show. Thank you for checking us out. Stay safe, and we will see you next time with the next Broken School Sessions recap. Bye.